Yes, I'm Hayden Wood. I'm um, one of the co-founders of Bulb. Um, we thought it would be useful today just to share three decisions that we've made um, over the last year with you. Um, they're relatively difficult decisions, so this is quite scary um, to, to share it with you. But we believe that being responsible, like one of the best ways to be responsible is to be transparent about what you're doing and to seek feedback. So um, I have to give you a warning. There is audience participation in this. So I'm going to ask for your opinion on the decisions that we've made. Right, so is this forward? Great. Yeah, so Bulb is an energy supplier. Um, we provide renewable energy to homes. Uh, we started working on the project in 2014 um, and started supplying homes with energy in 2015. Since 2015, we've grown. We now have 900,000, um, slightly more than 900,000 members. Um, the thing that we did differently was we realized that about 25% of your energy bill is made up of admin cost that your energy supplier has. Um, and we realized that we could save about 80% of that by using modern technology. Um, and then we could pass that saving onto members. We could also invest some of that saving into renewable energy. Um, so yeah, that's what we've been, been doing. Um, the average bulb member, when they switch, is the, uh, they save about 1.1 tons of carbon per year, which is um, apparently the weight of a large seal. Um, when we started Bulb, we knew we wanted to uh, try and do things a bit differently. Um, we, uh, we discovered B Corp um, and became a B Corp right away. Um, and that is a very important uh, part of, of like why, why we're doing what we're doing. We want to we wanna prove that we can be a um, a good, rapid growing business, um, but also we want to think a bit more about multiple stakeholders. We don't just want to think about shareholders, we want to think about our members, we want to think about our team, we want to think about the wider community in which we operate. Um, that doesn't mean that we don't want to be a great business too, so last year we were um, the fastest growing company in the UK, um, and so for us it's important to constantly you know, balance these things. Um, one of the, the things that we battle in the energy sector um, is that it's not liked very much. <laughs> this is a slide I um, sometimes, well, actually, every week when people join Bob, I say, welcome to the most disliked sector. Um, but that has real implications. So um, because people dislike and distrust energy companies, it means that they don't take action. They don't choose where they get their energy from. So when Bulb started in, in 2015, about 60% of people had never chosen where they get their energy from. They just inherited the supplier from that house. Um, and we're battling that. We want people to make an active choice about where they buy their energy from because it has an important effect on climate change and an important effect on their pocket. Um, and so this context informs the decisions that we've made. So I'm going to jump into the three decisions. So the first decision... is around the cookie notice. So on one hand, most companies have a cookie notice on their website. It loads, and it's sort of a bit of an interstitial. It's in the way. You have to click uh, OK. Um, most lawyers recommend that you have uh, a cookie notice in order to protect yourself um, as a company. On the other hand, uh, it leads to a t terrible experience. Um, and so we have decided not to do it. We, uh, we make it very clear in our terms of service with our members, um, how we use their data, um, and we have <laughs> never had a single member complain about this. We think it makes our site a better experience. It's smoother for people to use. It's easier for them to sign up. Um, but yeah, this is a decision that we took a lot of time to think about and ended up deciding not to do it. We think it's slightly controversial. So first bit of participation. Um, hands up if you would have a cookie notice. It's all right. You can. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there you go. So that's like, it's about four, 30, 40, maybe 30%. And then hands up if you wouldn't. 
you're all sucking up. <laughs> <laughs> you especially. <laughs> Um, okay, that's interesting. That was maybe was quite every, everyone sort of almost put that we had like a ninety five percent participation rate. So that was that was uh, that was about yeah that was about sixty percent of the group. Interesting. Um, so decision two. I wonder if um, if this will come up again today. Uh, Facebook. <laughs> okay. On one hand, Facebook is a black box. We don't like sharing more data than we have to. However, on the other hand, it's where people are. We can recruit more people to join Bulb, to switch to renewable energy, if we can share our stories with those people. Sharing data with Facebook means that we can stop advertising to the people that have already joined Bulb, um, or to the people who've said that they don't want us to show them ads. Um, and if the, again, this is a very tricky trade-off that we were, we were trying to decide. Do we, do we share uh, data with Facebook? And, um, and so we did decide to share data with Facebook. Ooh. But what we did differently to maybe some other companies is that we've made a big effort to tell our members that we were doing it. Um, so this is a dedicated message uh, that we sent out to all of our members, telling them exactly what we were doing with their data. Okay, second question. Um, hands up if you would have done the same as us. Ooh, less, maybe 30, 20, maybe, maybe I'm being biased here. That's maybe 25% of the group. Hands up if you wouldn't have done the same as us. Yeah. It's about 60%. Very scary. OK, third decision that we made, which is around, I guess, what, dark, dark pattern, marketing uh, opt-in or opt-out. Um, so on the one hand, everyone hates email spam. We hate it too. Um, on the other hand, Opting in is another terrible experience at the end of your sign-up journey. It's unclear what you're ticking and what you're not ticking. So what do we do? <coughs> we ask people to contact us if they want to opt out. And then what we do is we are really, really careful about the email that we send to our members. So we would never use our members' email to send um, a co-promotion for another company's product to our members. These are the types of emails that we send to our members. We send statements about people's energy accounts. We send messages about referral, because as a Bulb member, if you share your link with another person and they sign up, we want to share some of that value with you. And then on the right-hand side of this page, we also send people emails about their carbon impact that they've had a result of maybe switching to renewable energy or even reducing their energy usage. Um, and the question for us here is, you know, at what point do these messages become marketing and at what point do they become service messages? Is any of it marketing? I don't know. So, um, so okay, let's ask that question. So hands up um, if you think these messages are marketing messages. That's about 85% of the room. <laughs> it's very important for our business that we send useful email to our members. If we have a drop-off in our email open rates, we, um, we become unable to communicate with our members. We become <coughs> unable to get our members to manage their energy accounts, which leads to a bad experience for them, but it also creates a risk for our business. Um, so what, for us, it's very, very important that we protect that high email open rate. We have an email open rate of around 75%. Um, and and keep that, we hope that that keeps us honest. One of the things that we've done around this is um, we want to be very conscious about the default decision that we're presenting to our members. Um, and we have uh, sort of 
um, taken the decisions out to other, other groups of people. We've also worked on dedicated projects where we've inspected these things. Um, we've worked with one of the um, organizations who's here today, uh, a group called IF, um, around their data ethics toolkit. And for us, this is a, a set of decisions that we are going to continue to reassess and, and make over time. So in summary, um, I would say that these decisions are very difficult and they come up regularly. Um, the plan that we have for this is to dedicate you know, specific people and time to work on them. Um, so it's not just a, a thing that we expect everyone to do in their, in their spare time. Um, we want to be transparent about this, so we blog about it a lot. We talk about it on our community pages a lot. Um, and we uh, want to talk about it at, at events like this um, as much as we can. Um, and then finally, the important thing for us is to get feedback on it. So um, I would really appreciate uh, your feedback if you have comments and thoughts on the decisions that we've made. Thank you very much.